So you did it. You created this card game. We're not really strangers. Tell me about. Are we recording? Yeah. Oh, we're just like we've started. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, I didn't know we started. I'm okay. Gonna go from the top. Okay. So you've done it. You created this card game. We're not really strangers. Um, Talk me through the process, like the creative process of creating something like this. How do you get go about it? So the long story is I had started off doing photojournalism when mm-hmm. I was in middle school and I would walk around with my camera and take pictures of people and interview them. Yep. And I realized that my camera was my passport to people. Mm-hmm. And when you walk down the street and you have a camera around your neck, you can talk to anyone about anything. Mm-hmm. And you can approach them and be like, hey, I'm working on this photo project. Can you tell me about your first love? And it's not weird. Oh. You know what I mean? Because you have this excuse. You have a social okay to Got dig you. deep with people. So prior to taking photos of people, you'd like interact with them first. You weren't one of those people that just used to snap and then ask no. questions. Well, yeah, I would, but I would approach them, mm-hmm. take their photo and then interview them. Got you. And the interview is what made the photo interesting to me. Yeah. Um, and so from there, I, I was trying to figure out like, how do I, like, what is my purpose for doing it? You know, mm-hmm. um, because Humans of New York had become popular around that time. And right. I, I didn't feel like, you know, like what, what's what did, Humans of New York? Humans of New York is just a similar photo. It's a similar like concept where he would photograph and interview people sure. of New York. And I wanted to, and I didn't know how to make what I was doing unique, mm-hmm. but I knew I really enjoyed it. And anytime I had something that was hurting me, like a heartbreak or bad experience, I would use that as catharsis yep. and photograph and interview people about their heartbreaks. Mm-hmm. And, but I was on Instagram, my Instagram handle was at chickens and waffles. Yep. And I would post my photography and hashtag it waffleography. Mm-hmm. And that was my brand, yep. you know, it was just photographing like different people under waffleography. And I knew I needed a better name for what I was doing. So how did that come about? So that came about, about like a few years ago, I was in downtown walking to my car and I saw this man reading on a bench, this mm-hmm. older guy, and something compelled me to walk up to him. And he was reading poetry. He was telling me that his passion, I always ask people, what's your name and passion in life? Mm-hmm. And he told me his passions were Jesus and Israel, mm-hmm. which was interesting because I'm from Israel and yeah. he didn't know that. And um, then he told me, like we, we had our conversation, we did our interview. And as I was walking away, he told me, that I'd write a book one day and it would be called We're Not Really Strangers. Mm, yeah. <laughs> the prophecy is yeah. spoken. <laughs> so he was the one that gave me the name and at the time I didn't know what it would be, but I liked it and I was like, this is kind of like aiming me towards what this project is all about, which right. is showing that inside we're all the same. Yeah, you know? so it started off as photography. Yeah, it started off as And then it moved into effectively you kind of just interacting. But what was the motivation behind creating the game? So the motivation for creating the game was I was in a really bad place. I remember I was at my in my friend's room and I was really depressed because the project wasn't moving forward and I didn't have a product. It was just this idea. Mm. And I knew I wanted to bring people together, so we're not really strangers, but I had no idea how to do it. But this idea was in my head for the longest time to write down the questions on little index cards and set up a table and two chairs at a park and ask random people to sit down with each other, complete strangers, and ask the questions to one another. And the first question was, what is your name? Mm-hmm. And my friend that was, on, uh, was helping me produce it said, no, make that card. What do you think my name is? So oh. people are like assuming about each other, like challenging assumptions. And I hated that idea. I was like, no, like that's not going to be interesting at all. But I, but he, but he told me like he forced me to do it. Mm-hmm. And as I was watching people play or not play, they were just asking questions. I saw that. What do you think my name is? Like was a really funny moment because it's people looking at one another and like you know exploring their their assumptions. Mm-hmm. And I decided to add to that. I was like, you know what? There's so many assumptions that we make about each other sure. just by first glance, or yep. even you know, just the assumptions we make by knowing one another. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to um, add more. So I added, what do you think I do for a living? Or do you think I've ever had my heart broken? Why or why not? What do my shoes tell you about me? Mm -hmm. I always look at people's shoes. Oh my goodness. Because it says so much. It's so weird, isn't it? Like when I first meet someone, and I don't know what it is, I'm just naturally drawn to footwear. Mm -hmm. Because I think footwear can tell you a lot about a person. It does. I feel like more so than 
how kind of well kept they are more so than whether they brush their hair this morning mm -hmm. like what choice of footwear did they decide to put on and what was their decision behind that i'm kind of like oh he's in a converse kind of mood today do you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. or oh she's in a stiletto heel kind of mood today like it's right. really really interesting and insightful and obviously these are just my judgments i don't know whether i'm right or wrong but yeah. i feel like we kind of receive that information and we internalize it and therefore maybe our reactions to people are like that as well. 100%. And Crazy. like we do that with not only shoes, but like the smallest things. And we mm. don't even realize we're silently judging each other constantly. Yeah. But that's that was the inspiration behind level one, which is called perception. It's yeah. like challenging those assumptions that we make. Sure. So from that day of watching people play, I essentially like developed a level, mm -hmm. level one perception. And then it's like, okay, level two will just be connection. Like you're you're getting past first impressions and going into the real stuff. Right. And then naturally level three would be reflecting. Uh -huh. And I realized like I could gamify these three levels and add wild cards and other elements to it mm -hmm. and really turn it into a card game. And that's how it all is. So how many iterations have you been through before you got to this final product? Because it looks beautiful, by the way. Thank you. And obviously I saw one, I think one of the earlier models. Yeah. You so saw how many have one. they been? There's been, the thing is the cards themselves have changed a lot. Like, so I would say there's probably been like 10 iterations. Wow. Yeah. When did you start? I started like three years ago. Wow. Around three years ago. But level like the levels were the same. The levels have always been the same. Yep. But I just had to watch people play. Mm -hmm. Like I would I always take this to parties or different scenarios and no one knows it's my game. Mm -hmm. I just say, Oh, I found this game. I let people play and then I see people's responses. So they might pick up a card and be like, Oh, that's a weird card and I take note of that and I replace it. And what I wanna see is when people pick up a card they they laugh or they they have a positive emotion or even yeah. if it's an uncomfortable one, but it's but it's still it's still positive, Got you know? Me. Was there any point when making it, obviously having gone through those 10 iterations that you literally thought and you said that the actual motivation or, you know, the action of creating the game came from when you were kind of sat in your room and feeling depressed mm -hmm. um, because it wasn't moving forward. Um, was there a time when you kind of questioned, what the fuck am I doing? Oh, yeah. All the time. <laughs> So, I mean, till this day, I think today I'm more focused and have more of an understanding. But for the longest time, I didn't know what this thing would be. Mm. And I still don't. Like, it's a card game, but who knows what it'll be in a year from now or mm -hmm. five years from now. Got you. Was yeah. there anyone that said to you that urged you to do it, first of all? Obviously, you mentioned your friend mm -hmm. um, that kind of helped you with the questions. Mm -hmm. Was there anybody else that was kind of you know, your champion? All of my close friends. Because mm -hmm. uh, the way that this game was really made, and this is something I haven't um, talked about with you yet, but it really, it came from my passion of photographing strangers, interviewing strangers. Mm -hmm. But it also was really inspired by terrible dating experiences for like a oh. year and a half. Oh, for real. Because what would happen is mm -hmm. I found myself- I'm listening, I'm listening. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. I've got a few of those. Yeah, I have many of those from the past. And I realized that I was dating guys for the wrong reasons, one. But also I felt like I was dating complete strangers, which was ironic because I had this thing called We're Not Really Strangers, which is all about connecting on a deep level. Mm. But I found myself really scared to actually connect deeply with the men I was dating because mm. I wanted to keep up this perfect persona instead of letting them really see my flaws and vulnerabilities. God, and yeah. that was the safest way to date. Mm. So I think this game was me trying to build something for myself that would give me a social okay to dig deep with the people I was dating. Mm -hmm. um, so almost like an intimacy. Yes. It enabled you to be more intimate. Yes. Mentally rather than physically, let's assume. Yeah. Um, <laughs> with the people that you were I guess, you know, dating and, and I guess spending probably the majority of your time with. Yeah. Yeah. Like I wanted. Why was that so important to you that you kind of got over that? Well, it was important to me because you think that the safe way of living and dating is what will make you happy because you're in control. Mm -hmm. But I realized the relationships were really shallow and were leaving me really unfulfilled. Mm -hmm. So I decided I I don't want to play safe anymore. I want to. I want to grow in my relationships and I want to see people for who they really are. And Deep. 
Yeah, and then and have that in return for myself. Mm-hmm. I just wasn't happy anymore. I like had the experiences for long enough, and I was like, "Fuck this!" Like, I want something real. I want people to see who I really am. Mm-hmm. But I needed something to empower me to do it. Got you. So, and also my girlfriends were going through this with me. So this game is really them coming over after a bad date, and we talk about it, and we're like, you know what question we need to add to this game is this because of those experiences, mm. and it didn't. My intention for this is not for it to be a dating game, but it really can, it really works for that setting. Yeah. You know, but then after I made it, I realized it works for different things mm-hmm. as well. I played it with my little sister, I've played it with my best friends. Mm-hmm. So, what kind of guys, let's throw it out there, mm-hmm. give me a few characteristics of the guys that you were dating before the game. They were men. <laughs> this is so vulnerable, but I guess this is a point. I've got my card. Yeah. So, they were, um, they were men, not to get into specifics about them, but they reflected of me. Like I wanted validation of myself through dating them. Mm-hmm. And I was focused selfishly about like, oh, what can I get from this person? Or what can, how can they make me feel better about myself mm-hmm. versus what can I give to this relationship? Right. And how, you know, so that was a shift. That was how I was before. And so I found myself dating guys that made me, that on the surface were good for me, I thought, yep. you know, or that made me feel good because of my insecurities. But they didn't nourish your soul. But they didn't know me. Oh. So they liked the idea of me, which is very common in dating. Of course. They like the and idea And this, this is LA. You're dating in LA, Dating presumably. in LA as like an 18, 19, 20 year old. Model. You know, model. Yep. And, um, and what ended up happening is this. I introduced myself to them in my best possible version, hair done, nails done, cute outfit, you know, but I didn't want them to see me in any other light than right. my perfect light, mm. which then keeps makes you a prisoner to the Standards. facade and the standard you've created. Mm-hmm. Then what happens is they see a perfect version of yourself, quote unquote, so they don't really present their imperfect selves. And then you're just both acting in this fake way with one another Mm. where you can't really ask the questions you want to ask or say the things you want to say. So you're both just living in this illusion and you're afraid to ask anything to break that illusion. So you're just stuck in fake world. Amazing. I love it. You're just stuck in fake world. So, and I was just tired of it. This is Los Angeles though. Don't you feel like there are so many people that operate on this level here every single day. I mean, I've yes. lived here for like 10 months and what you just said could not be more profound or more true of this city. You know, our, our interactions with people are so very uh, limited and time consumed, you know, time restrained because everyone's off to the next thing, off to the next party, off to the next event, off to the next person. That those kind of fleeting interactions are always very and often very vacuous and... Mm-hmm untrue perhaps yes so what i've learned though from that is it doesn't have to be Mm. one thing i'm really a firm believer of is that questions are an art form yeah and we can dictate the depth of our conversations based on the questions we ask one another Mm -hmm. so something a lot of people in la ask oh what do you do that's like a question people ask a lot yeah i haven't I don't really ask that. I always ask people, what are you passionate about? Yes. And that, in fact, I remember the first time we met, uh-huh. you asked me that question. And I was like, okay. <laughs> it makes a Kareem's huge on difference. another level. It's a different thing because mm-hmm. it, it, firstly, it, it really gets to the core of the person and, mm. and you just connect on a deeper level. And it's something you want to talk about. Yeah, it's something there you want to talk about. There are people, I guess, that, um, you know, what you do and what is your passion are two different things they don't necessarily want to talk about what they do because it might be that nine to five job that just pays the bills and they're just not passionate about. Mm -hmm. Uh, But what they're passionate about is what they're passionate about. So of course they want to talk about it. And when they talk about it, I guess you get the truest self. You get, you get at least a little bit deeper, you Mm -hmm. know? And so, so I don't ask, what do you do? I ask, what are you passionate about? Or Mm -hmm. instead of how are you? If you really want to get deep, ask somebody, how are you really? Yeah, You know, just that little adjustment to the question adds so much depth to it. Because we're so used to kind of gracing over that. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Really? Yeah, really. 
Well, actually, no. Like, you know, like this week I've been like having to do my tax returns mm-hmm. in the UK. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So Stress. I think, sure, we live in LA and conversations are very often shallow, but they really don't have to be. Like, mm. we can take responsibility for that and, mm. and just ask better questions that we really want to know the answer to. For sure. I think the interesting thing or the perception actually of Los Angeles from a person that has obviously come from the UK is that LA is very shallow. Mm-hmm. And that the people are very shallow. And I'm like, actually, it's almost exactly what you're saying. It's almost the opposite. It's almost like it's shallow if that's the way you want to see it. And if they're the engagements that you want to have with people. I personally, I see the shallowness and I see the conversations. But my experience of Los Angeles and America has not been that whatsoever. But maybe that's because of my readiness to Mm -hmm. kind of dive in and, and dig deeper, so to speak. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Do you think that we are, you know, in this day and age, lacking in connection? We're more connected than we've ever been, haven't we, surely? Yeah, of course, with Facebook and Instagram, we're more technically connected, but we're not really connecting. You know, a friend of mine said, like, on social media, we're all looking at each other, but we're not really talking to each other. Mm. You know, we're looking again. It's like the dating experience. We're looking at this perfect image, Mm. you know, and... There's a quote I found online that says, um, rawness is so attractive these days because everything is being filtered, Mm -hmm. you know? And that's something that's so refreshing Mm -hmm. is when somebody asks you, how are you really? It's like, whoa, I'm not used to that. I'm used to Mm. the fake, you know? So for our listeners, comments, comments on Instagram is not conversation. So, you know, when I have, you know, you meet your friends, oh, no, we spoke last week on Mm -hmm. Instagram. That's not a conversation. That doesn't count, right. surely. Right, right. You know, especially if you're like, you know, private message or whatever. No, that's not a conversation either. Right. I feel like conversation should take place face to face, shouldn't it? Yeah, it should. I mean, personally, I don't think it has to. Like, I think a phone conversation or a text conversation could be as impactful. Mm. It can, but you just need, I just feel like the questions need to reflect what you actually want to ask one another mm. and what you actually want to talk to. What do you, and go, you know, going back to our topic of, of connection, what do you think the implications are for the future generation? Because like my generation, we're the generation that grew up with dial up internet. Mm-hmm. Like internet is such a new concept. Mm-hmm. Our parents' generation, you know, can barely email. Mm-hmm. And pri- you know, my nan is like, the fact that she has a Facebook profile is amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, so what's the what are the implications for the next generation that grew up on instagram you know from the age of 13 14 posting pictures of themselves whatsapp twitter facebook how do they connect to be honest i don't know what the implications will be you know i have a younger sister she's 14 years old now and she is very mature for her age and she's played this game with her friends and I overheard them in the living room playing, you know, and I think... Were you surprised by any of the uh, answers? I was surprised by how mature she was, mm-hmm. but she was playing with a bunch of boys and they were kind of giggling at the questions. And some of them, though, I heard them really dial in and go and go deep. And I think, I don't think social media, hopefully it won't ruin mm-hmm. um, the kids' ability to connect as long as... And that's my intention with this product, you know, is I want to reintroduce meaningful connections in a way that's current Mm -hmm. and that makes it cool. Like a a goal of mine for the brand is to make vulnerability cool, Yeah, you know, through the branding, through who I partner with, through the way we create the aesthetic of it, the videos we make. I want to appeal to a younger generation that I think Mm. really does need this, Yeah, perhaps more than someone older who Mm. already is connecting on a deep way. I want to make this fun and interesting for them and something else i found is that people love talking about themselves and they love oh yeah 100 percent. they lo- like there's a, a quote i like which says in order to be interesting be interested mm-hmm. you know and i think if people young kids see that like oh you know through playing this game or just asking better questions i become more interesting sure. then they'll grab onto that but i think there needs to be more products and more brands that encourage young kids to want to do it for sure so this is obviously just one you know one way mm-hmm. you see as as effectively the bridge between reconnecting but is there anything else you talked about other products are there any other ideas that you think like are they simple ways to reconnect with people reconnect with friends yeah you know siblings absolutely i think besides my game i just think it's a shift in the way we think and what do you do to reconnect um i don't know i just i just 
I'm a big user of this game. Like, mm-hmm. I really use it a lot. I've, I've tried it with my most recent boyfriend, and it, there's a wild card in the game that says, admit something. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to get really personal, but I was really scared to say I love you back to him. Like, <gasps> I just was, like, really scared to, like, he'd already said it, and I was just scared to, like, re- like say it back for mm-hmm. some reason because I just get really, like, when I feel a lot of emotion, I kind of hide it sometimes. Yeah. So the game empowered me because then I forget what level it was, but there was a wild card that said admit something. Yeah. And I took, like, I was quiet for, like, five minutes, and I finally said, I love you. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, so I just let me say it. So I personally and with my friends, like we will just sometimes like sit together and ask a question from the game and I'm constantly adding more stuff to it. Yeah. So for me just like I'm really big on having like a social okay, like something that helps eases my fear of vulnerability because I get really like I made this really for myself because I have such a hard time connecting and like yeah. asking the hard questions like Got I'm you. I am that I'm an example of that that's why I've always needed a camera or something to help me where where do you think that comes from would you say is it like what? an anxiety or my what? fear of vulnerability yeah or you know that that need to kind of connect with people or the need to create a tool to connect with people well um my fear of I would say in in my friend, in my friendships, it's not hard for me. Uh-huh. Um, but in my intimate relationships with men, it has always been hard for me to be vulnerable again because for the longest time I was trying to upkeep this image of perfection mm-hmm. and vulnerability and perfection don't go together, mm-hmm. you know? So I was afraid to be vulnerable because like, oh shoot, I'm gonna start crying. My makeup's gonna run. Uh, my face will get puffy. He'll see my weakness. He'll see my flaws. He'll see the things I'm ashamed of. Mm-hmm. So that's not perfect you know what I mean so I was always afraid to do it so I just but also I realized it was unfulfilling living in that perfect box so Mm -hmm. I had so the game is something that just kind of came out and has helped me like picking up a card game and the card is asking the question I'm not asking that question for real you know so just Mm -hmm. gives me that excuse yeah (laughs) and um sometimes I would like I'm Sometimes I joke that, like, I wish this wasn't my game because it, it's still my question. You know yeah. what I mean? But, I, like, the more disconnected you are from it, it's like, yes. oh, this isn't my this So, is therefore, not my question. you can play it the way you want to play exactly, it. Exactly, because it's like, I'm not, mm. this, this is what the game says. That's what the instruction says, is to dig deeper, so. We've played this you know. game before. Yes, we have. I have to admit that. We have played this game before. Yeah. However, it was, a, it was like an earlier iteration. Yeah, it so was. So, I wonder, um, and I whether we play this again Mm -hmm. because this is really interesting because I'm very intuitive I'm intuitive type of person Mm -hmm. and I'm betting that when do you remember when we played it before Mm -hmm. I'm kind of betting that when we played it before you probably saw a little bit of yourself in me oh yeah and that's and it's really weird because we've never spoken about this this is the first time we've spoken about it Mm -hmm. and I can remember sitting down we were at a table with effectively was like eight strangers we were playing with eight women I remember like a big group of girls which that was one of my first times playing it in a group setting yeah yeah and it was really interesting yeah Um, and I can remember a lot of my answers really didn't reveal a lot about myself whatsoever and was Mm -hmm. probably playing from a position of strength Mm -hmm. which is and this was really quite interesting because as, as I've kind of gone away um you know and we're coming back to this game I thought about this game a lot and I thought okay I played that game from a position of strength but strength I feel is actually one of my and confidence is one of my personality traits and that's one of the things that you mentioned Mm -hmm. I think that day I thought I wonder whether it would be different if we play this game again today Mm -hmm. so (laughs) (laughs) we just happen to have our little copy here we do I think we should be I think we should do it I think we should just go straight in we've got three different levels Mm -hmm. so our first one is perception Mm -hmm. And then we have um, our next level. And we'll, let's do like maybe five cards from each one. Mm-hmm. Level two is connection. And then we have level three, which is reflection. Mm-hmm. Um, and also laid out here on the table, we have two cards. I like to call this the bullshit card. <laughs> Um, and it says dig deeper. So that's going to allow us to, if we feel that one or the other isn't being transparent or could perhaps go a little bit deeper, then we're going to pull this on each other. Yeah. This is going to be interesting because I haven't obviously played this iteration. I know there are going to be questions that, that come up again. Actually, there was one thing I wanted to ask you before we dive in. Yeah. So, you know, we talked a lot here about connection. Do you think that... Um, connections are temporary or forever? Mm, 
I think they they can be both. Of course, they're temporary, right? The conversation lasts a minute, an hour, however long, or a relationship lasts a few months or a few years. Um, so that's temporary. But the impact it can have on someone can last forever, even mm. if it's the smallest impact, you know? Mm -hmm. Like somebody complimenting you or or acknowledging you or really listening to you, mm -hmm. you know? Like I had a meeting yesterday um, and I was struck by how well I felt listened to. How you were understood. I was so <gasps> like, he was just such a good listener. And Fabulous. that conversation's long over, obviously, but mm -hmm. that is going to stick with me. And hopefully maybe I'll be a better listener because of it. Right. You know, and you just never know the impact mm. that you have. Definitely. I actually played this game with my um, boyfriend oh. um, when we first started dating, like maybe a couple weeks in. I didn't um, know that. Yes, I did. And I remember we were back in London, we played the game and I was just like, this was such an easy and quick way to get to know him better. Mm. And I could see him like squirming in his seat because he didn't want to go there. And I'm just like, answer it. That's God damn you, answer it. So, um, oh gosh, the tables have turned. So um, I'm going to pick like, let's say, in fact, I was going to go five cards, but that's not fair. One of us will end up with two questions and one of us will end up with... We're going to go for six cards. Okay. From level one. Okay. okay. You're the guest. So Should away you go. Okay. What about me intrigues you? Oh, right. My goodness. Here we go. What about Kareen intrigues me? Hmm. What about Kareen intrigues me? Um, hmm. I think, do you know what I find really intriguing hmm. is how you can be so wise, so driven and on a path at this age. You're what age? 23. 23. And I can remember meeting you, what, maybe two years ago hmm. and at 21. And I can remember... Um, I was intrigued by how, and this was really interesting, I wanted to find more about why you were so frustrated with where you were at. I felt like, you know, I was like, you're 20, when I met you, you were 21, and I was just like, I'm intrigued because, she, you know, you felt frustrated and that things weren't going your way with this particular product. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I want to know more about Kareem because I want to know why she's so frustrated. She's 21, she's created this amazing game. You've done, you know an amazing job at it and got so many people engaged. Mm -hmm. I'm intrigued as to what type of person at 21 feels like, you know, that there's still so much more to be doing and to be done. Like I'm intrigued by your kind of strength of character and what's left that I haven't yet discovered. Mm. Interesting. Mm. I like that. And the interesting, uh, actually, one of my friends, Little Mama, mm -hmm. she mentioned to me, we've just been doing this show together. She said that one of the things she left me with, an amazing quote, her brother actually said to her that in everybody you see or everybody you meet, there's a piece of you in everyone. And so I was kind of like, I'm intrigued by Kareem because in her I see almost like the Olympian competitor Hmm. kind of aspect of me and that frustration or want it all yesterday yeah exactly mm -hmm. i want it all yesterday there you go especially when you have like in your case a talent and a skill set and you're working so hard at a goal mm -hmm. and you see the work you're putting in and not mm -hmm. only do you see the work you're putting in you know what the vision is yeah you get it like before it's a real thing Bravo. so you're frustrated when it hasn't already happened, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's where I, f I feel a similar way. Do you know what I loved about what you just said? The fact that you recognize the fact that you have talent. And I was talking about this recently about the UK. In the UK, we, you know, the fact to say I'm talented or I have talent, people think it's cocky or people think it's arrogance. Over here, they own it. Mm. So I literally loved the exact thing you just said about like talent. To be talented and to be feel like you're not you know, that frustration comes out of having these ideas and this creativity and knowing that you can do better and you mm -hmm. will do better. Mm -hmm. I love that. Oh, God, I'm going in, I'm going in. Here I think it's go. my turn, though, right? Oh, is it? Oh, no, no you, my turn. Well, it is your turn. You're right. Trying to cheat me out of a card. <laughs> do you think I went to college? If so, what do you think I majored in? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Do I think you went to college? 
because you were an Olympian, you are an Olympian. Yep. My assumption is that you had to train for this a long time. So maybe you you majored in like you were focusing on sports in college or you said no to college altogether and you were self-educated and focused mm. on sports. Which one is it though? So, but you're so Which smart. <gasps> but I don't think you have to go to college I to love be this smart. Game. I don't think you have to go to college to be smart. So okay. I'm going to say you went to a university, you mm-hmm. got in for your smarts, also for your sportsmanship. Oh. And you trained regular, regularly, however you say that word, mm-hmm. in college. Yeah. And um, I think that's what, what happened. <gasps> Am I right? Do you want to know the truth? Yeah. Okay. You're kind of spot on. Okay. Like, I went to university. Uh-huh. Um, I studied French. Okay. Nothing no. really to do with sports. Wanted away from sport because I was doing it every day. Oh, uh, okay. Pretty much fell asleep in my lectures and seminars. Yeah. And um, just spent the time, the four years, like you know, perfecting my craft, biding my time, getting an education, but also like tuning into becoming, I guess, that Olympic athlete. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So you studied Mm. French? Yes. Okay, I didn't guess that. Yeah. So you speak French? Yes, fluently. And that was from college? From college and then I guess high school, what would be high school So you really learned it from school? Because yeah. a lot of people I know that study language like don't actually speak the language. No, yeah, I'm fluent. What's your I favorite thing in. to say in French? Um, chuchoter. What does that mean? <laughs> to whisper. It's beautiful, isn't <laughs> it? What is it? Chuchoter. 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 There you go. Nailed it. <laughs> You're a linguist too. You're a linguist now. We nailed it. Right, uh-huh. next question. So now it's my turn. Right? Yeah. Okay. You're up. So my question is, what does my Instagram tell you about me? Oh, now this is an interesting one. This is an interesting one, I think. Really interesting because your Instagram tells me you're a model. Mm -hmm. On surface level, it tells me you're a model because I see um, pictures of you, obviously like just looking fucking fire (laughs) on a daily basis. Um, And then if I do a deeper dive, I see that there's something else trying to break through, but it hasn't broken through yet. Mm. Oh, absolutely. That's such a good... Am I right? You're so right. I'm trying. <laughs> Is this like a points game? Because yeah. everything's a competition with me. Can I... I'm going to write that down. <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it. Because I'm trying really hard. This is an intention of mine, is to let my whole self show on my Instagram mm-hmm. and not focus too much in on pictures of myself right. that show my modeling side. So I'm trying to figure out how to... Mm. change that up but I know it hasn't completely broken through yet killed it but yeah I'm working on that I'm so I'm winning winning <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so competitive um do I seem like a morning person or a night person easily a morning person because you're an athlete really uh, yes such a morning person you have to train I know for a fact my assumption is and I'm pretty sure I'm right so you wake up really early and you get shit done early and you probably work out early so here's the truth now I'm a morning person, but okay. when I was competing, when I was doing track and field, not at all. We wouldn't really? start training till like 10 in the morning. Okay. So I would be, I mean, I don't call 8 a.m. wake up. Like that's not a morning person. That's just a person that has a one or two responsibilities a day. You know what I mean? Like getting up at eight, you're lazy is in my opinion. <laughs> See, you're, if a morning, you're, you're a morning if, person. If you're getting up at, <laughs> but if you're getting up at 6.30 to go about your day, that's a completely different mindset to me. I see. Like the people that want to get up at like five, six, those guys are like going for, you know, they're going for success. That eight o'clock vibe when I was an athlete was like, yeah, eight o'clock, train at 10. It's really bizarre. And in fact, actually, since I've retired, my mentality towards hard work and how to work has completely and utterly changed. Maybe I'd have been a better athlete. Maybe. Interesting. Who knows? There could have been more medals. Who knows? Mm. Right, you're up. Okay. Do I look kind? Explain. 100%. Yeah? Yeah, definitely. Like, you have a real um, softness about you. In fact, something that I'm, uh, I've yet to develop, which is compassion. Um, I think, I mean, one of the things that I have to work the hardest on, my producer, Raf, Raf, um, we talked about this the other day, um, was compassion and your understanding of compassion and stuff like that. Like I, I think my um, niece, she's six, no, oh, she's six years old. Oh my gosh, she's older than that. She's, um, I think she's nine. <laughs> I hope that's right. 
Um, when she was born, that was when I think the floodgates to compassion opened up. Hmm. Um, but in you, I can see that that's kind of always been there. Interesting. You could just see it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> I would say I am kind and I am a softie. Like I always try to understand people because mm. I feel like I'm so flawed and imperfect that like I can't really be mad at anyone. Like I've probably, there's a Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln quote, quote that I like and he said, um, you can't, I'm paraphrasing, but basically don't judge him or her because you're exactly as they would be given similar circumstances. Right. And I'm a firm believer in that. Mm -hmm. Hence she created this game. Yeah. Whose card is it? I asked you that. So you, okay. it's your turn. Here we go. Do I seem like a coffee or tea person, sweetened or unsweetened? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite question. Tea. Because you're British. Yeah, all right, fair play. That was a bit of a, you know, and stereotype. Be and because you're health conscious, it's not sweetened. <laughs> Maybe with agave or something natural. It's so predictable. Is it true? <laughs> not like completely. Tea, no sugar, um, you know, just get it down. You simple as that. Okay, oh so my now God, we're I'm even, so I think. Okay, we're even, points. Stevens. I'm writing that down. Chalk that one up. <laughs> right, let's move it forward. We're moving on to stage two. And we have, uh, we are talking connection. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Go for it. You're my up. Turn? Yep. Oh, oh God. it's a blank. Okay. Here, we need to get one more. Okay. okay. Oh, shoot. So this is a wild card for you. Oh, gosh. What does that mean? It's a wild card. Call someone you admire and tell them why you appreciate them. No way! Oh my God. Call someone I admire. And tell them why you appreciate them. All right, come on, Oprah. I'm not, I'm only joking. She didn't give me a number. Um, oh my goodness. Call someone I admire. It's London. We're in LA. Speakerphone. Oh my gosh. What time is it in in this um oh my god and this is the interesting thing when you call someone and put them blast them on speakerphone this could go one or two ways oh yeah who knows how um, it'll go oh my giddy aunt is there any way out of this any way at oh, all you risk losing okay i've got one i know you like to win this guy's gonna be funny if he answers i think he's in miami at the moment and it's my good friend, Rich Royal. Hopefully he'd be busy. Do I get out of it if, he, if he's busy? I think, yeah. I do? Maybe you leave a message. I don't, it's, it's WhatsApp. Can you even leave a message on the old WhatsApp? Okay, no, not answering. Can't do it. Can't do it, I'm afraid. Let me just have a quick scroll, see if there's anybody else. No one else I admire. No one else that's awake. Do I get out of that you one? You get out of oh. it. You tried. You tried. Should we'll we replace another, it. Yeah, I'll replace we? it. Oh, I got another wild card, though. Oh, fudge. Oh, man. Oh, God. It's another wild card. Go for it. So, staring contest. Okay. First to blink yep. must reveal a personal problem oh, and fudge. ask your partner for advice on mm. how they might handle it. Right, okay. First to blink, not laugh. Okay, mm -hmm. one, two, three, go. Oh, God, I'm going to go. <laughs> Wait, we gotta do that you one know, one more time no, because no, no. I bl what like there's a technique apparently to blinking. Don't close your eyes first because then your eyes will reset. Can we go again? All right, go on. Okay, you personal have problem. And ask. Oh, gosh, personal problem, personal problem, personal problem, personal problem. Okay, so this is what's been happening recently. Mm -hmm. My mind is literally so many things are going on at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I have a boyfriend, we're in a relationship. He wakes up in the morning, goes straight on his phone. Like, obviously we, you know, we conduct our business in Los Angeles, but then also we have like responsibilities back home in the UK. He's straight on his mobile phone with the emails. So in the mornings, and what started happening is I'm doing the same thing. Like I'm getting up, I'm checking my phone and I'm like straight on it, just, you know, okay, I've got to send this email, that email or whatever. And literally I've noticed for the past few days, we have barely like even talked when we're going out the door to one another. Mm, that's not good. So 
it's obviously really common. Like we all have bre- uh, Instagram or our phones for breakfast. That's yep. like the thing now. Phones, I like that. Phones yeah, phones for, for breakfast. breakfast. But something that my my boyfriend has done, which has been really incredible, is he takes his phone and he charges it outside in the kitchen. Mm. So when he wakes up, he's forced to be more present. Yep. You know, and then you can be you know with each other instead of with and you can each other say good morning you can say good morning so i think maybe you two could benefit if you would want and if you would want by having your phones charged in the kitchen yeah so when you wake up you're together for at least five minutes until you go get your phone got you so you just kind of That's place it one. in a way that optimizes your guys's time together do, that's a good one. I feel like it would make us slightly more anxious not being able to reach for our phones. But then that isn't that the point? That's the point. And I like think switching off. Yeah, and it's like a pattern the, you're breaking. So the idea gonna... of even switching your phone off like overnight, that would just freak me out. Yeah. I think. I think I switched it off the other day to get some peace and quiet. Mm-hmm. And then I charged it. And by the time I woke up in the morning, the thing was on and I had messages. I was like... Oh my God, this thing's the devil. Mm-hmm. It's just constantly wanting me to be on it. You yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. It's addicting. It's insane. They made it that way. It's mm, purposely they knew what addicting. they were doing. Yeah. They want your habits. Absolutely. And your behavior. Yeah. They want to know everything you're up to. Yeah. Bastards. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think it's my turn. Please give me a wild card so I can throw Kareen under the bus. When you're asked, how are you? How often do you answer truthfully? Well... I always say good because that's how you're programmed, you mm-hmm. know, is to say, oh, I'm good. Um, it takes for me prompting from the other person to really open up. I'm not just going to open up to anyone, you know, because that's that's not protecting myself either, you know, mm-hmm. and I don't want to. What do you need to protect yourself from? I think people, we should earn vulnerability from one another. Aha, uh-huh. so you know? not, so hang on. So here we go. Mm-hmm. If we have to earn vulnerability from one another how do we do that when we're strangers i think it's well firstly like if somebody were to ask me how are you Mm. i would answer good yeah but if someone were to ask me how are you really that's them earning my vulnerability in a way because they're Mm. naturally curious they want to know i don't want to bore somebody with how i am really Mm -hmm. unless they actually want to know so that's a part of earning it is just a curiosity in someone else and someone Mm. that's being really someone who is actually interested in me and a good mm. listener is another way. Got you. Someone who's not judging, mm. you know. So those are just ways that you earn it. And mm. a complete stranger can absolutely earn it. You can you can read that from someone pretty quickly. Oh, my gosh. You just reminded me of the fact that I'm probably one of those people that they'll be like, how are you? And I'll be like, blah, 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 and literally just give it all to them and then walk off. Oh, my God. I'm one of those people. It's fine. I appreciate people like that. I I. I'm really bad at small talk, small talk. Like I'm better off if like someone starts telling me about like a heartbreak or something yeah. more real, like that feels more natural to yeah. me. And then you know? sometimes I, I will go into one, I'll be like, blah, 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 and then I'll just see them like being like, okay, it's time for me to leave now. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's hilarious. Right, you're up. Let's get it. What is your defining characteristic? Oh my gosh. I hope it's my personality. Um, what about your personality, though? I think uh, my defining characteristic is probably just my ability to just talk to people, engage with people. Like, I think since, not even since moving here, like, I've always been a naturally chatty person. Maybe it's because I grew up in a pub. Um, and, you know, I've, I've constantly had strangers come through my doors which, into my living room every single night. That's so cool. And so um, I, as a, a result of that, I have this ability to talk to people from completely different ages, backgrounds, races, everything. Um, And so I think my defining characteristic is the fact that what I've noticed now as I go about my day, and we live in the same building, Mm -hmm. is, you know, when I walk into the room, people, they know I'm there. And so I have a presence because I'm present and because I engage. Mm, I like that. Yeah. You have a presence because you're present. Yeah. 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 I completely I so. agree with that. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Level two connection coming up. What's been the best compliment a stranger has ever given you? Um, so when I was really young, again, getting vulnerable, mm-hmm. um, I didn't grow up with a father figure, really. But I remember when I was 16 years old, I walked into a Starbucks and there was this older man sitting at the bar mm-hmm. and he had his own coffee mug. 
at a Starbucks. Love I thought, it. I was like, whoa, this guy's really at home. Did it have his name on it, like it Jeff? Didn't, I don't know if it did. I didn't. I don't think it did. But we. I was really young, and I remember just standing, you know, at the bar waiting for my panini or whatever I was waiting for, and he started talking to me, mm. and he noticed my camera. And we, he was asking me the kind of questions that I would ask strangers. Like, mm. I remember he asked me, like, what, are, what is your greatest fear? And at this point, I'd had a really deep conversation with him. I was telling him how my boyfriend was about to move away, and I was really sad about that. So when he asked me that question, he was expecting me to talk about that. But I told him, I was like, no, my biggest fear is losing my curiosity. Mm -hmm. And he was like, really? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, it's not about that guy. And I was like, no, because I feel like without my curiosity, like, that's what drives everything I do. And I know I'll meet mm. someone else, but my curiosity is my main it's thing. It's who you are. Maybe. It's who I am. And we kept talking and he was just asking me all these amazing questions and was such a great listener. And I really admired him. He was like a lawyer. He had retired, very smart. Mm -hmm. So we were talking for maybe an hour. And um, before I left, he told me, he, he said to me that he never had a daughter but if he ever had, he would have hoped that she would be something like me. Oh. And I, and again, I didn't have, I've never had a really a father figure. So it was just kind of like this, like mother, uh, father, daughter connection with How a complete crazy. stranger. And I never saw him again. Yeah. But I will always remember that conversation. Oh man, that's deep. Yeah. <gasps> Isn't it crazy? Do you feel like that was fate? Absolutely. I'm a big believer in things happening mm. for a reason, even if it's the reason we give it, mm. you know, but Again, like that at an early age, it taught me that strangers can change. We can change each other's lives for the better. Yeah. If we're open to the conversation, then we can yeah. come from a place of love. So we don't just have to walk on by. No, we don't. And we absolutely can. We don't always have to sit and talk to people for hours, you mm -hmm. know, like we're, but when you're open to having it at least once in a while, it yeah. can create an impact. Because I must admit, I'm either one of those people I'm all on, literally won't stop talking, or I'm a hermit. Yes. Yeah, and I'm like, same. I'm just same. like in my little hole, same. in my bubble, trying not to same. engage with anyone, just conserving and all my so energy. that's so okay. I'm learning that too. Like, don't fake the funk. Don't yeah. fake. Don't fake the funk. That, I love that. Yeah, that takes too much energy don't too. Like, if I don't want to talk to anyone, I really don't want to fake it. I want to mm -hmm. just be quiet. Got you. You know? Right. Who's up? Is it me? You asked me, me that, I, I think. asked you. Yes, so it's I you. Asked, yeah. Go for it. What are you more afraid of? Failure or success? And why? Ooh. So this is an interesting one to ask an athlete because if I think back to, you know, sport, there are, I think there are two types of people. There are people that are scared. Oh, here we go. There are people that are afraid to fail and there are people that are afraid to succeed. Really? Yes. And I've done both. Like, okay. you know, there have been races that I've won and races that I've lost. But this piece of insight I will share probably one of the best pieces of insight I have about anything. Um, but from my sporting background, this is definitely it. Um, I can remember going into the Commonwealth Games, um, the heptathlon, the final event in leading position. So going into my final event, the 800 metres as the leader, I've never been in a position like that in the heptathlon at a major championships before in my life. I didn't know what that experience felt like. I didn't have any reference point, not at that level. At a place where I really shouldn't have been, there were five girls on paper who had better scores than me. So as an outsider and very much an underdog, to be leading that competition going into the final event, oh my God, Kareen, scariest thing on earth. I was crapping myself. Like I finished that last event, the, long, the javelin and went into the, um, 800 meters there was a 45 minute wait period where all of your demons come up to say hello what if you fall what if you lose what if this what if that and in your mind you play through all of these scenarios that are just like what why are you coming to me now like go I knew I wasn't thinking like that when I was running the hurdles like four hours ago or whatever and all of a sudden all of your kind of demons come up to haunt you and all of your kind of insecurities all of your vulnerabilities and I was just like, you're literally on the edge of success. And the ability to kind of overcome that final hurdle is massive. And it's like, it's nothing I've ever experienced before in my life, but it's most definitely uh, my biggest achievement so far. My ability to kind of hush those demons and go out there and run my race. And I didn't run the best race ever, 
like I'm you know I scraped by and I secured that gold medal but like when I look back and I'm like that gold medal was you know almost an accumulation not an, just an accumulation of the time that I'd put in, in the expense over the past 15 years but it was very much about getting over that final hurdle when those demons come knocking and are like are you, is this really you are you really that champion that you've been telling people you are for the past 15 years it's your ability to just be like yes I am am and just stand there and absolutely own it wow and how do you how did you do that i i think i i think i did just that i think i asked myself the question are you that champion Mm. are you the commonwealth champion on this day and i remember saying it back in the february my competition was in the october and i can remember saying i'm going to win the commonwealth and I believed it. I believed it the whole way along until those questions were asked. And that was the first time I doubted it. Mm. And at that point, I had to literally just be like, I am. And I'm going to go and show you and then go out and execute. Oh, my gosh. So am I a person like, am I afa- afraid of success? Not anymore. Um, now I know what that is. No. Am I afraid of failure? Never. Even less so. Really? Yeah. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Why are you less afraid of failure? Because I ha- literally have nothing to lose. I think, um, you know, I, I don't know whether you know the story, like my background is that I lost my father at a fairly young age. Um, in 2008, I was like your age. I don't know that. And, um, and it's literally one of the, the biggest tragedy in my life. Felt like the, you know, um, carpet had been pulled from beneath my feet. And I think once I'd kind of gotten over that, everything else kind of felt like small beans. I'm like, what, I'm going to go out and run a hurdle race this week? All right, then. Oh, what, I'm going to go and throw this javelin? Okay, then. Everything felt easy after that. And so I really just live life now as though I have nothing to lose. I'd already lost, I guess, the biggest and probably the most influential person in my life. And I just felt like, okay, everything from here on in is easy. Oh, I can cry. Mm. That's so beautiful. Don't, because you'll get me going too. Oh, wow. Okay. What was your uh, father's name? Uh, Peter. And one thing about him. Uh, he had big blue eyes. Oh. Big blue eyes and blonde hair. But oh. very, very kind heart. Big blue eyes and a kind heart. Yeah. Whose question's this? Um, it's mine. Yeah, it's yours. What's been your happiest memory of this past year? <sighs> this past year. Hmm. I've had so many. I've had so many happiest moments. Let me think. Take your time. Yeah, let me, let me really This think. is Slay Sunday. Could be Slay Monday at this rate. Happiest <laughs> <laughs> yeah. moment. Oh, that, that one's so hard for me to answer because there's just really so many. What was the last one? Just now. This moment with you. Oh. Because because yeah. just even you telling me about your dad mm. and then me sharing my experience with a stranger and that mm-hmm. like father daughter moment yeah. you know and then hearing yours because i feel a lot closer to you now mm, i definitely. didn't know you went through that mm. you know and yep. i just feel closer to you and mm. you're someone too that i look up to oh. and i admire you Thank so you. hearing that is humanizing yeah and i see what you've had to go through to Mm -hmm. be who you are so Mm. this is like a really happy moment oh bless you i think you know what what i wanted to do with especially with this podcast i feel like this is an opportunity for me to get to know people better too Mm -hmm. and to bring people up here onto a platform whereby other people can see them differently Mm -hmm. because you can see people every day but do you really see people? Mm-hmm. And I think in meeting you, I knew that there was so much more to you than, um, you know, the, if you scratch the surface, there's so many more layers to you. Mm-hmm. And so I was kind of like, okay, I wrote a list of people. Who do I want to get in the hot seat? And you were definitely on my list. <laughs> Wicked. Um, we're moving it on to level three. Ooh. We're moving into reflection. Our final six cards. My Who's turn. asking the question? You're up. Yeah. Has your perception of me changed over the course of this game? Um, hmm. Has my perception of you changed over the course of this game? Yes, definitely. Yeah? Yeah. I think um, before I was aware that you're, um, you know, a, a six, you, I, you know, I'm aware that you're going to, Hmm, how do I phrase this? 
I know that it's like success is kind of, this is an interesting one. Say this it. is all about terminology. Um, I feel like before I could see the person that you are, like you're an ambitious person. But after this conversation, I know that you're going to be a successful person. Aww. And, um, you know, like seeing those things in people, like you can always say, oh, you're, people always come up to me all the time and say, oh, yeah, you're going to be fine. You'll be successful. But then knowing that someone's going to be successful. And I think the difference between, I guess, us having this conversation when you're 21 and now you're 23 is mm -hmm. the 21 year old was like, like had it has all the tools mm -hmm. the 23 year olds knows how to how to use them mm. and that's basically the difference mm. i feel like <laughs> in this two years since we've known each other that person had all the tools and was probably everyone was oh you're gonna be fine you're 21 and you've got so much time but the 23 year old is ready mm. <laughs> that's what i've got thank you you're very very you. welcome i can't wait is it mine <laughs> yeah here we go what is something you hope I never change about myself? Hmm, let me think about that. Because there's a lot of things. Bless you. But... It's going to sound, I don't know if this is the right word. Go for but it. But your pep. Yeah, pep. Your spark. That's like such an, yeah. Your spark. Defo. Because I can see you being 99 years old mm -hmm. and still making people laugh. Like you're on yeah. the drive here, like you're constantly cracking me up with mm -hmm. like, you know, you're intelligent, you're saying smart things, but you have a funny way to say it. Mm -hmm. you Slightly know? dry occasionally. I, I hope I'm like 90 and still super peppy too. Yeah, you're pep. You just yeah. have like a spark to you that's funny. And you also, something I learned about you, we had like a brief encounter recently. You don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. And you also, um, are unapologetic about what you like. Yeah. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah if, yeah. if you like something. Oh, I love it. You are going to, like, even if it's something I would be, like, embarrassed to share. Like, oh, you're yeah. just, you own it. Yeah. And, like, I think that's, like, a very. Yeah. I think we were talking quality. about female strip clubs, yeah. weren't we? I didn't know if you we wanted to We were talking about say. female strip clubs. And yeah, you were saying you loved it. Yeah, like me and my friend. Yeah. Me and my friend Zainab. I took my friend Zainab. I think it was, we were living in uh, Birmingham in England at the time. And uh, we were coming back from a night out and it was fairly early and there was a strip club on my road and I was just like, should we go in? She was like, yeah, let's go. And we had the best time yeah. ever. Like we literally just got away with absolute murder. We were just absolute rascals for a good hour. And I can remember saying to her like, oh my God, like I'm not going to lie. I feel really turned on right now. Imagine what it's like for guys going to strip clubs with girls like dancing and they have to leave feeling to, I feel turned on. They must feel like, they must not know what to do with themselves. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. What a hot mess. Yeah. It's a good night out. <laughs> good night out. I love that about you. Indeed. Um, who's up? I can't me. remember you. Me. Go for it. What would be the perfect gift for me? Oh, hmm. The perfect <laughs> gift for Kareen. <laughs> What would I buy you on a big occasion? I would... Do you know what? Hmm. 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 Do you know what I'd buy you? Hmm. This is really... This just popped into my head. What? I'd buy you, like, a duvet. Like, What's you that? know, like a, a throw, like you put on the sofa. Uh-huh. Like a big comfy woolly blanket oh i would love that i don't know why i literally just saw you kind of like on your laptop just that's wrapped so up in me. a big coat like that's so me i love like with so a cup weird. of coffee being cozy yeah i just saw you thing. literally cozy on your laptop in a big like fluffy that's so weird that was because you're very intuitive you said that right? yeah that's very and that's spot on I, and i there you go that's very spot on coming up right who's up it's me yeah, it's me yeah, here we yeah. go brilliant what is one thing that you think I can do that would dramatically improve my life? Mm. I want this. I want this answer, for real. You kind of hinted me towards yep. the answer on the way here. Go for it. Um, let me let me really think about it though, because I think we're <laughs> yeah. in a similar position because mm -hmm. of what we discussed in the car, mm. right? So something. So what's the question? Something you would you would do? Yeah.
Okay. Find someone, because you... Let me think. Let me figure out how to phrase this. Because you... And you can cut this out. I don't know if you want people to know this, but you you brought up that you have a lot of novel creative concepts. For sure. Um, You just want to make sure that when you put out your content, Mm. you're in a position to defend your place in the market, like you said. Yeah. And I think that's a very, like, very honest, matter of fact thing. Mm -hmm. And it's good that you, like, recognize that. Yeah. Um, So I guess what... And I'm in a similar position, right? Mm -hmm. And I just... I think what would help both of us is just having someone or a partner or some infra- infrastructure that helps us do that. Mm. So you can focus on what makes you such a mm. powerful person. It's you know? really interesting that you mentioned the word partner because this is, um, you know, I guess being, this is the first time in my life that I've actually physically like partnered with people hmm. the first period of my life and the first year of my life that I've done partnerships and I see the huge benefits from them like you know when you're a creative person and you have a creative idea I'm just that person that goes and makes it happen on my own and I think that comes from being a single event athlete like a sprinter we're not part of a team we just go out there and run mm-hmm. um, and so this is the first time in my life ever that I've been looking at partnerships but a but I'm very, very picky as well with regards to partnerships and who, okay, who's going to be on my team? Like it's important that the people that are on my team bring all of those things that I need to the table, but also are people that I want to work with and that have wicked energy because like the idea of having maybe a financing partner or, you know, a marketing partner or whatever it be, um, and they're just a drag, (laughs) oh my God. No, thanks. This is something I want to do for the rest of my life. Right. I need to make sure that, that team and I think about it as very much as a team on a bus. Who do you want to like be? Who do you want to be on your bus? And your bus is a very small space and you might have to drive all over town, all the way across country. Who are the people that you still want to be talking to and you don't want to kick off over like the yeah. Grand Canyon? Do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's a really I remember a mentor of mine when I was younger would always say that team is the most important part of a business. I didn't understand that. I was like, that seems like the easy part. But I'm learning the same thing as you. Like Sure. And finding people that um have a similar ambition and goal, but also have um completely different strengths to you. Deep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. My question. And then we're on to the last one. What do you think Oh, hang I on. I think it's my turn. <gasps> I'm cheating. Go on, you go for it. Okay. We'll put another one down. There we go. Okay. Oh, no. Yes. What is it? Well, actually, it's about, it's for you. Oh, no! <laughs> but it's just really silly, but you'll be great at this. Oh, Write brilliant. a song about your partner. 30 right. seconds. Write a song. Then sing it aloud. Get into it. Um, I've got a friend named Kareen. Um... She likes to dream. <laughs> um, she's a queen. Aw. And she likes ice cream. Do you like ice cream? I like gelato. And she likes gelato. Can I just <laughs> see that bit? So my friend's called... And do I have to sing it, did you say? Mm-hmm. So I've got... And I get really it? into it. Okay, right. So maybe like... Right, let me get a beat going. It's a rap, apparently. I can't even hold the beat. You hold the beat. Got a friend named Kareen. She likes ice cream. Oh no. She likes gelato. <laughs> That's good. Oh, brilliant. You killed it. Oh, that was That's quite good, good actually. <laughs> right, last question. Oh no, it's mine. Cheat. I'll have this one. You did really well on the tapping. Not, not going with that one. Is this me cheating now? Are you allowed okay. to cheat like this? It's okay. Ha ha! Wild card. Write a note to your younger self. And it says selves. But so we both I'm do putting it. This, I'm putting this one on you. And um, write a note to your younger self. One minute option to compare. We both do it though. Go for it. Here, I'm going to give you okay, great. paper for it. Okay, quick note to our younger selves. Um, I'm just going to do three points, Okay. I think. Three really quick points. Oh, this is going to be funny. 
Okay, I'm nearly there. How are oh, you wow. doing? You're, you're quick. Oh yeah, I've got this one down. I think I, I think all my mistakes have been very uh, younger self. Younger self. Oh god, yeah. Oh god. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This is a good one. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I I'm have ready. one one important note for my younger self. Okay, go for Should it. Should I go? Yep. So, dear younger me, this is very practical advice. Keep track of what inspires you and what you love and keep it more organized so I can use it more now. Because that's something I do is like the things that I found really interesting when I was like 13, 14, I still inspires me and is like mm -hmm. very informative to what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but it's so unorganized that it's hard to find it. So you didn't keep a journal or anything I like did. that? I did, so I have a lot of journals and things like that, but mm -hmm. I wish I was even more organized with like my computer images that I would save, because I'm Got a very you. visual person. Ah. So I would just keep it more organized and I think it would help me more today. Hard drives. Yeah, Got hard drives, <gasps> yeah, be more organized. Okay, mine was, dear younger Louise, um, Basically, teach yourself how to do your hair and makeup before you take that picture um, of you and your gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. Um, literally, like one of those photos that will go down in my life forever. And I'm like, what was what? I'm I didn't sure even you know. looked beautiful. I mean, it was average. I'm not even gonna lie. I was just like, oh god, I didn't know what concealer was. Like, it was, we were in India. My hair was frizzing. I was like, I got to live with that photo for life. But That's then I'm hilarious. like, whatever. I'd rather have the photo than not have it. Yeah. Um, number two was don't date douchebags. Um, I think I speak for a lot of women out there with that one. And then the third one, now this is, this was an interesting one. Don't buy those lime green flares. Mm. I remember like that was, I like to like, I like a bit of fashion and I was experimental, but I can remember buying, do you have, do you flares like bell bottoms? I have one, yeah. What they, you know what flares yeah, are, yeah. you guys say flares. So yeah, I remember buying these like lycra lime green flares and they were disgusting. What on earth was I thinking? Who, who, what, where were my friends when that happened? Where were they? Maybe they liked them. Oh God. So there is actually one last part of the game. Yes, go I'll let it. you read. It's the final card. Final card, okay. Each player write a message to the other. Fold and exchange. Only open once you two have parted. Oh, I love that. I love that. Right. That's why the notepad is in this. Okay. I'm going to write my little message now. Got it. Done. You're quick. Done. Brilliant. Kareem's writing an essay. <laughs> I, mean, I don't. I don't mind. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> Get me some free life advice. Yes. Brilliant.
What are you writing, Corrine? She's run out of paper. <laughs> I, love that. I love it. I love it. She's going to the other side now. Brilliant. We didn't use the dig deeper either, mm -mm. which is kind of good. We didn't need it. We were going in. We didn't need it. Okay. Fudge. There we go. Okay, amazing. Right, let's swap now. So we can't read these until we've parted company. I'm going to read mine and I'm going to text you tomorrow. <laughs> okay. And if I don't text you, it's because I'm disconnected. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to put it in my bag. Um, so, like, there are... Obviously, we played the game. That was wicked, by the way. That was fun. It was wicked. That was really fun. Am I right in thinking you gave this game to Riri and she loved it? I didn't. Yeah? I didn't. I gifted it to um, my friend, Tai Tai. Yep. And he kept asking me for more. And mm -hmm. I had 20 prototypes at the time. So he was like, I need another one. I was like, okay, here's another one. He's like, I need another one. So I just kept giving it to him and he was gifting it to his friends. Yeah. And it did end up with her. Yeah. And what? he said she enjoyed she it. She loved it. Yeah. <gasps> who do we know who she played with? I don't know. We'll have to ask him. <gasps> Amazing. <laughs> Let's do that. Let's call him and just find out. Yeah, we should definitely find out. But um, What does the future look like for We're Not Really Strangers? Like, let me put it this way. Mm-hmm. If this were a game, mm -hmm. who would you love to see sitting there and oh who would you love to see sitting here? Oh my God. Two people that you would love to see sitting so down. So many, there's so many. Come on though, who's the top? Let's face it, there must be a list. You must have thought no, about No, no, I have a list, of, but the thing is there's just so many variations. Like I would, during the election, I would have loved to see Trump and Hillary play. Yeah, oh my God, can you imagine? I would love to, see, I'm really, something I've always been really passionate about is conflict resolution and like how mm. do we take conflicts between people and like humanize one another. Mm. And see you what know? you have in common see rather than all common. the differences. Yes, because I always, I feel like understanding creates progress. Sure. So if we disagree, if I at least can understand where you're coming from and you can understand where I'm coming from, we can step Forward, forward together mm. instead of tripping over each other. Mm. Would that ever work thing. with Trump? I don't think so. I have so. no idea, but I would have loved to see it. Okay, outside of politics. It. Outside of politics, there's so many. I would love to see, I would love to see like a first date on camera. Mm. You know, I would love to see like a couple that's been together for 50 years play. Yeah. I would love to see, I think like Cardi B playing with Anna Wintour would be really oh funny. Oh my God, yeah, yes. Yeah. That would be brilliant. Yeah, I think that would be really funny. I want to see, there's just so many people. I a, a goal of mine is to create like either an online series or something for TV where we just yeah. pair up interesting people to Definitely. show we're not really strangers. Uh, one of my other goals is I'm from Israel and um, I want to have a June, a Palestinian mm. play on the Gaza Strip. Like that's yeah. another idea that oh someone presented God. to me and I really loved. Yeah. Just anywhere where people need to humanize one another. Completely. You know, like I love that's that. what I want to see. <gasps> yeah. Kareen, this has been Slay Sunday. I thank you so, so much for joining us. Thank this you. has been an amazing session. Like thank you. we discussed connection. We've discussed pretty much everything. We deep dived into yeah. our truest selves. Yeah. I just want to say a massive thank you for joining us. Um, I hope that our listeners have been as enthralled by, as I have. Um, where can our listeners find you? On social media, Twitter and yeah. Instagram? What are your handles? Yeah, so on Instagram, our for We're Not Really Strangers, it's at We're Not Really Strangers. Uh, yeah, at We're Not Really Strangers. And my personal is at Chickens and Waffles still. Mm -hmm. um, and to find more about the game and the product, mm -hmm. it's notreallystrangers.com. Cool. And are they available for sale now? We are taking pre-orders. <gasps> when will they be released? They will Do be you know? released in the next couple months. We're still figuring out a launch date. Mm -hmm. um, but our merchandise is available. So people have been ordering sweaters from around the world, which has been really cool. Amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, Not Really Strangers. And you can sign up uh, for our newsletter, too, and we keep you updated. Brilliant. Yeah. Corrine, thank you so, so much. Thank you. Love you. Love you, too. <laughs> <laughs>